Hello and welcome back. And we are finally back on the Wicked Edge tonight. And we are going to be touching up this. This is my dad's Duluth Trading pocket knife. And I thought it might be a decent knife to check out as I sharpen because one, it's got a fair amount of edge damage. So I think you can see all the chips right up there in the belly. And also, it's a recurve, so right through here. So I don't know, I don't think that I've ever um, done a, a video with a recurve knife, so I thought maybe this would be a decent one to show just how well the Wicked, wicked Edge does on a recurve, or at least how I do recurve knives on the Wicked Edge. So I think it might uh, move the camera around a little bit, but yeah, this is what we're going to be working on gonna put a just a working edge on this and maybe try to clean some of the stuff up probably get down in there clean some of that funk out and uh, uh, do some over oiling like I always do so yeah let me get moved and then we'll get started okay here we go um, I was gonna go ahead and get all this started ahead of time um, but there was a recent new subscriber who I saw put a comment on one of my videos that he said uh, it would be nice to see how I mount knives. And I have done a number of videos where I did mount the knife on camera, but I guess it wouldn't hurt to revisit it. So my plan here is um, with this knife, you can see that there's a large flat area right here. Flats are your friends with the Wicked Edge. So somewhere right in here is where I'm aiming to clamp this to. I'm going to use uh, some painter's tape. Just, I guess it's probably unnecessary on this knife uh, since it's a kind of a thumper. Um, but I never try to damage the finish of the blade in any way while I'm doing anything. So that's just a preventative measure to not put scratches on from the vise, so usually you go with folders in the top holes there, and that's not wide enough. I'm kind of curious to see if I can remember how to do all this, because I'll be completely honest, it's been a little while since I have sharpened a, a knife. Um, one thing that I am going to do is this knife has this thumb stud on a uh, just the one side and the right-handed side. Um, I'm going to try to keep this knife. Oh, I see I am forgetting. Um, need my little depth gauge. Um, but I'm going to try to keep that thumb stud back a little bit. And I'll explain why here in a little bit. It's basically for clearance um, on the stones getting, being able to reach this back corner of the edge back here. So I want that as far away from the middle of the knife there as possible. Okay, it looks like A and one quarter on my death gauge. We'll go ahead and put the hurt on that right there. And we'll go ahead and tighten up the bottom here. And I got my notes going over here, so A and one quarter. So I've got top holes, tape, and A and one quarter so far. And here in a moment, we will figure out what the angle is. So take off the excess tape. And I usually take a piece of the tape that I just rip off and cover up the action. This, the action on this knife is uh, pretty bad, but we don't need to make it any worse by putting metal shavings in there. So, let's see, do I have a marker? Yes, I do. Can I get it out? Yes. All right. This thing is chewed up. Okay, 
Okay, there's that side. All right, marker trick done. And we'll go ahead and grab some stones. And we'll grab our angle cube here. Get any little metal shavings off the bottom. Hopefully this has battery, it does. Excellent. I'm gonna zero it on our base. And we'll see where we're starting on this side over here. That is 15.8 right out of the gate. So we'll just kind of do a few passes here, see where it rubs off the marker. Hmm. Kind of what I expected. Um, I'm barely touching the edge down here. And right through here, I'm hitting the entire bevel. And then right all the way along the back, I'm hitting the shoulder of the blade. So it's wonky as hell. So, um, hmm, gonna, gonna have to make a decision to, at, at this point, it's kind of like I'm trying to decide if I want to adjust my angle to better fit the belly or the recurve. So this one's at 16.4. Let's see how it looks over here. And like I suspected, I'm having trouble. Uh, this is blocking me from getting that last quarter inch or so of the blade. So let's try to move that back a little bit just to hopefully get all of that. I need the depth key. Let's go ahead and take that off of there. Okay, so I was at A and one quarter before. I'm gonna to try to get it all the way back to A, which is about as, I mean, it's as shallow as the guide reads, but I still have plenty of that flat at least uh, halfway down the vise, which is, excuse me, plenty. So. Try this again, see if I can get all the way back. Ooh, it's close. That is really close to getting it all. I think I'm gonna try to take it back just a little bit more. I'd rather, I'd rather get all of it. Now my concern is that uh, this section of the blade is too close to the clamp and my stones are going to rub on, on the vise instead of the edge of the knife. And ooh, that's close and yes it is rubbing. So, well this is turning into being a horse's ass. Actually, I was just being dumb. 
This is gonna be all flustered. I'm out of practice. Okay, we're just gonna go back to right here at A. Because I'm making a decision right now to sacrifice perhaps getting the last little bit of the heel of the blade. So this, uh, the belly, is able to be reached. So, let's get the, all this crap out of here. Adjust my notes while I'm at it. Scribble, scribble, scribble. Okay, I'm going to attempt to find my marker. And we're gonna redraw that line. Where are we at on the angle? We're at 16.4 still. So let's see what this does. That actually doesn't look too bad. Um, I can tell we're leaving a little bit here on the shoulder, but maybe as we sharpen, we'll uh, kind of be able to work that down a little bit. So I'm gonna get this matched up over here. Sixteen and a half degrees over here. Okay, that's better uh, through the recurve up here from about here forward. Um, it's pretty heavy on the edge side instead of the shoulder side. I'm just gonna go ahead and make this perfectly matchy-matchy at 16.5. So, I don't know, the thing about this is, this is a complete beater knife. My dad is not a knife guy. So, it doesn't necessarily have to be it doesn't have to be dead nuts perfect because he could give a shit less about a half of a tenth of a degree on the edge of this knife. So, okay, yeah, I think that'll do. So, I, I was doing the marker test on 600 grit. Uh, just to speed this up a little bit, we're going to go ahead and get out the rough boys here. And I think I'm going to start on the 200 grit. I don't think I need to go to 100. Um, one thing about, I guess you could say, kind of budget knives or just some Chinese knife like this that... Uh, gets a brand name of a company, in this case Duluth, put on it. Um, uh, they use pretty uh, soft and very simple steels. So uh, what that means for a Wicked Edge user is that these stones chew it up. So like even that 600 took out a fair amount of the damage that was done on this edge right here. So. Um, one thing about the recurve while we get going here, what did I do with my little pointy thing? Hmm, very interesting. Lost it. Okay, we'll just use the pen. So the deal with a recurve knife is on a standard knife, while you've got like a flat and a belly and a tip, generally you're contacting 
the stone on the edge from, it's like the middle half of the stone. So on the stone, the center section right here is actually what's interfacing with the edge that you're sharpening. Once you get back here on a recurve, the inner half is the section that you are not touching. So this roughly quarter, the shoulder of the stone itself is touching here and the shoulder of the stone is touching here. And here in the middle, you're actually not contacting it at all. So that can kind of be a little bit screwy sometimes and throw you off um, because generally most knives, so you might be able to hear an audible difference. I'll do that again. Pay attention to what it sounds like here and listen to the transition here. And back. Hear that difference? That's because the center of the stone is much more worn than the shoulders of the stone. And that means that it's going to chew up your, it's going to sharpen uh, the edge much more aggressively because a broken in stone is much more um, gentle on knives as really brand new stones. That's why I, I try to break in stones on my kitchen knives and stuff like that. Um, but nonetheless, through the process of using the Wicked Edge, even through here on the recurve, at one point I'm hitting the, you know, this edge with this shoulder or this shoulder. So I am able, hello cuckoo clock. I am able to sharpen the entire edge, but it just changes from using the shoulders to using the center of the stone as you transition from front to back on these recurves. So it's doable. Is it ideal? Maybe not. Does it really matter? Um, not to me because this is what I have to sharpen knives. So this is what I use to sharpen knives. So that's just that. Okay. And I'm starting to see that a good majority of that edge damage is gone already. And I'm really starting to make some progress on working into the shoulder up here on the, in the belly of the blade. Spending a little bit more time back here because per usual, the blade grind from left to right is not symmetrical. And it's kind of this back little uh, ear right here on the, the very heel of the edge. I have yet to get off all my marker, so I'm not quite to the edge. Actually, there it was right there. So at this point, we are all the way to the edge on that side of the knife. Do I have a tip? Mm, not really. A little bit, but not much. Okay, we still definitely have some chips there. I could have just do the fingernail test. You can definitely tell. You can definitely tell where you're at, but we've got a burr. And I'm just gonna double check, make sure I've got a burr on this side over here.
and I do. So, now at this point I basically got my bevel set, and now it's just a matter of uh, getting out that edge damage. So I'm just gonna concentrate right here, basically from here to the tip with alternating strokes. Trying to evenly work down the damage as well as reestablish the tip. Okay, let's see where we're at here. I can still see a little bit of damage right in there. <coughs> Excuse me. We're getting there. Pretty close, actually. Oh yeah, got a nice tip going on there. Still got a little snaggle tooth right there. Maybe one more right there. See, I'm sure that some of you guys are happy to see a knife sharpening video instead of my big stupid face shaving. Uh, that's kind of become a thing for me though, the shaving. I 
have to be clean shaven for work. And I went out and tried to find a better way of doing it. So yeah, I'm like all into traditional wet shaving, but I just found out this week. It's kind of funny. I, I can't, can't believe it really actually works. So I've got turned a couple buddies onto it at work as well. And it's kind of become something that we're all a bit passionate about. Like it, we all just really kind of dig it. And so we thought <laughs> maybe we can try to get the company to provide us with shaving stuff, like either razors or soaps or whatever. And we approached them about it and they were kind of like, eh. So we said, okay. And then we thought, well, what if like at, our, at my work up in the ad building, the administration building, there's like all these conference rooms and stuff and if you have something going on, you can like use one of these conference rooms. So we thought maybe we'd try to uh, see if we can host like <laughs> shaving meetings at work. So there's like a few hundred dudes that are in the uh, resp respirator program there. Ooh, we're real close. There's a tiny little hiccup right there. But I think at this point, yeah, let's hit it with these. Just to make sure. I was going to say that at this point I could probably move up in stones and be able to knock that out with my finer grit ones. But we'll go ahead and get what we want right now with the 200s. But anyways, um, so we thought it would be kind of cool to see if we could like host like these meetings just to try to get one try to get like dudes that are in the plant that don't know about traditional wet shaving into traditional wet shaving but also um, we hope to like reach out to soap makers or brush makers or like online retailers of wet shaving stuff and try to convince them to send us free stuff so we can hand it out to some guys, maybe keep a couple things here and there, you know, get some, get a sweet new shave soap just for asking for it. You know, I guess the incentive for them would be potentially, you know, a couple hundred dudes that become customers. So we got, uh, <laughs> we made, made up this big plan, had, like uh, flyers made up, we got a PowerPoint presentation, we've got uh, detailed plans of what we wanna do, and we took it to the big bosses, and, or actually my most direct big boss, and then we, he was all about it, and so we took it to our safety team and the HR, and, they gave us a couple small hoops, or I guess large hoops, um, easy hoops to jump through. But uh, they gave us the green light, so like, yeah, they're gonna pay for food at this meeting, like donuts and coffee, and like starter kits for wet shaving to give away as like a door prize for people. And we're like firing off all these emails out to all these different companies and starting to get feedback. <laughs> it's, uh, it's dumb, but it's, it's interesting to me. But I do personally, aside from all that, I've got a couple new razors. I'm always getting new soaps just because I'm kind of addicted to it at this point. And I'm just digging it more and more. So I know that a lot of you guys are obviously knife guys and this channel started off as a knife channel, but yeah, 
the fact of the matter is, is that it's my channel and I'm just gonna do, make videos about things that are interesting to me. Not that knife sharpening is any less interesting to me, it's just I've kind of reached a point um, in my knife collecting where I've kind of, there's not a whole lot out there that I really feel like I need. I don't really see a ton of new and interesting designs that I'm into. Um, you know, I had, I kind of went on a buying spree based on like new blade steel and new manufacturers, you know, just new knife companies that I personally didn't own before just to check them out and see what's up. And if they had a sweet new blade steel, you know, like Magna Cut or something like that, I'd check it out and see how it sharpened up, see how I liked it, carrying it and using it. But I haven't seen a whole lot out there as far as new knives that really make me want to go drop, you know, 200 bucks on a new knife. Lately, anyways. I mean, I'm not afraid to spend 200 bucks on a knife, but... You know, it's kind of gotten to the point, like, how many titanium, <laughs> you know, S45 knives do you need, or whatever, you know, like, it's like with Spyderco, they've got a lot of cool designs, but, like, do I really need another G10 handled S30V compression lock Spyderco, you know, it's like, nah, probably not. And since I haven't been buying a whole bunch of knives, I haven't really, you know, I, I do still touch up my knives here on the Wicked Edge, but a lot of times it's just look at my notes, find what my angles are, slap the knife in there for a quick touch up and be done in 10 minutes and I'm on my way. And I don't feel like making a video about it. So like I still do sharpen, but not with the feverish intensity that I did before when I was constantly buying new knives, trying to do different things with different edges. I kind of got my collection pretty much right where I want them. You know, I've got like nice knives that have like polished edges on them. I've got user knives that have good working edges on them. I've got, you know, I've taken apart everything that I have. So, um, I don't know, it's kind of one of those things. So anyways, this thing's done. I'm going to go ahead and finish up on 600 grit. I've got all the damage out. I've got the recurve sharpened. And I've got a nice sharp tip. So I'll bring you back over the top and I'll show you how it looks. All right, here she is. Let's go ahead and peel this tape off of here. Um, in between switching there, I actually pulled the knife out of the vise and got looking at it a little bit more. And I noticed that uh, I still had one more chip that I... The lighting in this room isn't the best and I usually tend to look at... Uh, the sharpener from my right side that way, which is where the shadow is cast from my lamp ab up above. And anyways, there was a uh, another small little chip kind of right in this area. So I reclamped it, went back and got it. Um, but yeah, it turned out pretty good. But I guess that right there kind of shows the deficiencies of the Wicked Edge with the flat stones anyways, in terms of being able to access um, evenly all of the parts of a recurve of a knife. They do sell um, a 4 and 600 grit just like this with a uh, convex stone on it perfectly designed to uh, fit in recurve so you don't have the flat plane where you're just contacting on either edge of the stone it's actually convex and curved so it hits uh, evenly in the middle and I never pick those up because I don't really do a whole lot of uh, convex knives however in this instance it would have been perfect so yeah anyways I'm just gonna I'm not going nuts on this knife here tonight but we're, we'll go ahead and give her a quick wipe down see if we can get a little bit of this funk off of here and uh, oops don't need any 
rubbing alcohol on the table. I will have to mark. Probably should have used my map that I have, but that's all right. All right. Um, let's see. Do I have oil? Where are you? I just recently put new, a stack of new patches in my little stone case over there and they're like taking up all the room and it's hard to get to all my shit. But we're just gonna toss in a few drops of oil here. Trying to get this dude to move a little bit better. We'll see that actually works. Here's the spot that you want to get to. Probably should have done this first. Okay. Way too much oil per usual, but that loosened it up a fair bit. So there you go. That's uh, my dad's Duluth trading knife and a uh, crash course on what to expect sharpening a recurve knife with the Wicked Edge. So, anyways, that's it. Um, I kind of doubt that I'll post another video uh, prior to Christmas. So, um, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. I don't say Happy Holidays around here. I say Merry Christmas. And I hope you all have a safe travels if you are traveling. And stay tuned in. And I am going to try to put a little more effort into getting some more knife videos out there. I do have some knives that uh, uh, I've been using quite a bit lately that need a little bit of a touch up. So I'll be uh, back here at the table with the Wicked Edge. Excuse me, I'm burping. I just got done with dinner. <laughs> Classy finish. Anyways, with that, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. See you next time.